Just to put this in perspective, before uh, she did her interview this morning, Nikki has had to have a read through this. This is not just a notebook, it is her life. It's the first thing she sees. It says, memory loss diary, read as soon as you wake up. And it doesn't just include uh, birthdays and Christmases and the things you saw there. Also, really important notes such as, Chris is not lying to you about anything. And that just really puts into perspective what she's going through here. So let's have a chat to Nikki and Chris. Thank you so much for joining us. Nikki, you read this diary this morning. What, what was it like? Um, well, actually, I, I read it uh, yesterday morning because um, last night I only got a couple of hours sort of cat nap, um, so I can still remember bits of yesterday. Um, and when I read it yesterday, it was yeah, I was it was alternating reading and crying. Um, I mean, especially because you know it's been a year. And you know, I, I still can't believe now that it's actually possible for someone to forget a whole year. You know, I just I don't see how it can happen. So, what are the things that upset you the most? The things you read each day, I suppose, fresh for you. What are the things that upset you the most? To think you've missed them. With the fact that obviously I've missed a whole year. Um, like our son Freddie, he turned five um, at the end of September um, and he also started school in September. Um, Chris was 40 at the end of August. Um, you know, there's other family birthdays. Christmas, I've forgotten that. Um, you know, and one of my cats who I've had since she was a kitten, so for over seven years, she died, you know, and just reading all of that is, is very upsetting. Tell us the last thing you do remember before the accident. Um, just, I remember getting the results um, of my x-ray um, at the hospital, but I don't even remember leaving the A&E. So the last thing I remember is actually just like being in, in the nurse's room, just getting the results of the x-ray. And then since then, nothing until I woke like until I woke up yesterday. It must be absolutely terrifying. So the fact that you've only had a couple of hours sleep last night means you can retain a bit of yesterday, doesn't it? Bits and pieces. Um I can't remember all of yesterday, but like sort of, you know, bits here and there. Now Chris has been a real rock of support for you. What is this like for you each day having to answer the same questions and try and reassure Nikki? Um most days, it's just a case of running through it with her, and if she has any extra questions from what she's got written down, um, explaining it in a bit more detail, and if there's things on there that aren't written down that should have been, you know, we I'll try and make sure that she puts those in there, and basically just reassuring her, you know, that it's going to be okay. It's been a tough time, but you know, we'll get her through it, we'll get her there, and just to try and reassure her and keep her as calm as possible. And what's it like when she... I mean, you must be terrified some mornings. I mean, what's it like when she's going through that? Uh, it's... The, the first time she went through it, when she had a really bad episode when she woke up, was Boxing Day. Um, and it's usually on significant events where she's a lot worse. So, like, on... Say, the day after Freddie's birthday, the day after my birthday, and yesterday morning, which was a year, um, that's quite bad. And it's just a case of... She, she goes through a stage of, like, a panic attack pretty much, and it's just a case of then trying to talk her down and get her back onto a level footing. Now, what are the hopes for this? Have the doctors given you any sort of reassurance that you'll get better? Any hopes um, for the future? She won't be able to answer that one. Um, what they've said is they don't really understand it. You know, it doesn't happen that often. Um, and basically, they've said that it might return while she's just sitting, say, on the sofa like she is now all of a sudden, but then again, it might not. It might return and all the memories that she's technically lost will come back it might return and they won't. So it's just a case of, it's wait and see, really. That's just terrifying. And I know you've had a real problem as well. There's been quite a tough situation with your benefits, haven't there? Tell us about that. Yes, um, I contacted the Department of Work and Pensions um, about personal independence payment, because she was getting that originally for osteoarthritis and hypermobility and chronic pain. And I contacted them thinking, you know, there might be some available extra help out there. And they then came out to reassess her and said that she now doesn't meet the criteria and she lost a lot. 
Now, we need to just tell you what the Department of Work and Pension said to us. We did contact them for a statement. They said uh, they assessed, uh, Nikki was assessed at her home, did not meet the criteria for the allowance. After Chris and Nikki requested for reconsideration, no additional evidence was submitted, so the original decision was upheld. But I know you're now appealing that. Now, I just want to very quickly ask you one last question, Nikki. What's the thing that scares you the most? Not getting my memory back. Um, so, like, you know, say for argument's sake, waking up tomorrow and finding out it's actually 10 years later and Freddie's 15 and, you know, I've missed out on 10 years. I, I don't want to live like that. What made you think that you were a girl? Well, hmm. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> yeah, you just knew you were. Hard to, hard to put yeah, it. Yeah. I just did. You just did. So for you, that was just normal, wasn't it? Yeah.